Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Ball Fake Podcast. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure to like, subscribe, and support our new movement by putting Let's Go Viral in the comment section. But if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, make sure to give us a five-star rating and a nice review. But without further ado, here are your hosts, Nicely Chunga Benny and Greg King. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Ball Fake Podcast, members of the Off The Ball Network. And today we're going to be discussing whether or not, you know, Donovan Mitchell could potentially leave the Utah Jazz here in the near future. But before we get started with today's episode, we have a special guest on the Ball Fake Podcast. He's one of the better leaders of the NBA Twitter Spaces community. And, you know, he's he's got a really good platform. He also has a YouTube channel as well, discussing hey, NBA basketball baby. and things of that nature. Welcome to the show, Gifted X Blade. Gifted, how are you doing today? Hey, man, what's good, bro? I'm feeling good. All-Star Gamers know we have to have time right now. Um, I appreciate you for even reaching out. I love basketball, as you know. Um, we talk all things hoops on the Twitter spaces. Uh, I actually host a show on Mondays and Fridays at 8.30 EST called The Locker Room, where we can just talk basketball, be unbiased about things, but also be aggressive because it's important to have fun with this because, you know, basketball is very, very fun. So tap in with us. Um, YouTube at Gifted X Blade for all things hoops. I love basketball. Absolutely. Um, we will definitely leave your description down below in the link listed below. But um, let's get started with today's episode. You know, obviously yeah. the Utah Jazz, fourth seed in the Western Conference as of right now, you know, but essentially, you know, there have been some rumors and circulations about maybe Donovan Mitchell potentially departing from the Utah Jazz. What is your thoughts on Donovan Mitchell potentially departing from the Utah Jazz? So the idea of Donovan Mitchell leaving the Utah Jazz uh, during his current contract to me is something that I don't entertain thinking about as much just because for me, um, while there are other players in the league like Ben Simmons, like Harden, like even Kawhi Leonard who have shown that um, they have the power to void their contracts and leave when they want to, I think that the personality of that type of player matters. And in my personal opinion, what Donovan Mitchell has shown is like he's very rooted to where he's from. And I think that if he does leave, it would be in free agency. I don't believe he will be trying to force his way out of Utah during his contract. So for me, I don't think it's as realistic to think that he could leave them in the middle, but he could definitely leave in free agency. I do believe that is a possibility, especially if they keep losing year after year after year yeah I, I would i would certainly agree with that probably about 75 percent because essentially i mean there definitely is a possibility of him departing with the team right but yeah. things have not been exactly a hundred percent pleasant in utah at least by you know the reports that were I we've been going off of since the new year you know the utah jazz are 16 and 14. they had an abysmal month in the month of january they had a four and 12 record they recently a lot of been, yeah they recently have been able to turn things around you know they're 12 and 12 this month and hopefully you know they can continue to build on this but defensively there's still a lot of issues there you know they've been extremely appalling from that aspect since you know Rudy Gobert went down and even with him on the perimeter they still have some issues we understand this is a defense that we're heavily reluctant on a guy like Rudy Gobert one of the better shot blockers in the entire league but you know when you face a team that is, has the personnel to go small against you there's not a whole bunch of optimism about you know the Utah Jazz being able to you know surpass teams like that at least from a defensive perspective not to mention they have not really shown you too much indication of them being legitimate title contenders with every year it seems like you know they're a top two top three seed in the Western right. Conference um but there hasn't really been much of an indication as to you know this team really being able to take that extra leap we've seen we're starting to see teams like you know the Phoenix Suns just two seasons ago they didn't make the postseason and recently they made it to the NBA Finals the Memphis Grizzlies obviously they faced them in the first round last year but it seems like you know they've taken a huge leap as well we're still kind of waiting on that leap from the Utah Jazz and I don't know if it's a testimony to the fact that you know this tandem and Rudy Gobert and Donovan Mitchell isn't working I don't know if it's just the fact that the defensive issues is still the biggest issue with this team overall but essentially I I do think that when you take all that stuff into consideration there could be a possibility of Donovan Mitchell departing and with that being said gifted what is your thoughts how how much of a panic mode are the Utah Jazz in in this current state as of right now 
I think the Jazz are definitely in concern mode. Uh, I would say that because Utah has been doing what they can do, obviously, because they're a smaller market team. They're not going to be able to get as many free agents as they would like. So they signed Gobert and Donovan because those are the best players that they um, that their franchise has seen in quite a while. So the only way that they can really improve is by the margins as far as through the draft and through player development. And for the Jazz last year, um, they had a dramatic improvement despite not having any roster changes based on the offensive system and identity that they chose to fully embrace with the three-point shooting. The issue is they have a strong lack of perimeter defense. And for Gobert, like he's their defensive anchor. He is their defensive system. In my opinion, he's their most important player. But despite all that, when you have a lack of perimeter defense, you're asking him to try to overcompensate for everybody on the court. And that leads to pressuring Donovan Mitchell to carry the offense more to keep up with that scoring load. I think if the perimeter defense was better and not as compromised, you wouldn't be able to spread them out as easy. So for me, they're definitely in panic mode because having these two players, especially if those reports are true and Donovan Mitchell is not liking the situation on top of the fact that if they wind up underperforming this year as far as not going to a conference finals this could be an issue in the next two years so they're definitely concerned about their future of the franchise right now or at least they should be in my estimation yeah I, I would definitely agree with that and you know what another topic that a lot of people don't really bring up too often uh, obviously we understand you know the, the lack of perimeter production defensively is one of their biggest issues if not the largest one but offensively, you know, despite this being one of the better offenses that I personally have ever seen in my entire lifetime, you know, I think they're having an offensive rating month um, of 121 as of right now. But when their three ball isn't falling, you know, the offense is, is, is extremely nullified. And how do you think that, you know, they can try to fix those issues? I mean, they've kind of, you know, brought in guys who can add a little bit of an in-between game we understand Rudy Gay he's a guy that you can I guess put it within the middle of your offense you know put him in the X of your offense can post up things of that nature uh, Hassan Whiteside also was a pretty adequate addition as well and you already understand what you're going to get from Jordan Clarkson but do you do you have any solutions as to you know what they can do to fix their offensive scheme from that dynamic so to speak okay see that's a good question um for me I think what Utah realized last year is they're gonna have to embrace a puncher's chance type of style based on their ultimate lack of talent. And I think that their best style that maximized the guys there would be the three point shot. The problem with that is if that's not going, their team just isn't as impactful. I think that to go to another scheme to have more success, especially at this point in the season to me, I just think that's gonna be difficult to really get the most out of those guys. I really think like their main problem isn't the offense. It's really like to me, it's really the defense because yes, while your offense can struggle if you're not hitting those threes, if you're able to hold up on your defensive end, that wouldn't be as much of a problem. And to me, the only way that you can kind of fix those problems would be through honest communication and proper rotations of guys. Like I think at this point, Jordan Clarkson and guys of that, you know, ilk who come in to score like a whole lot defensively they're completely lost and i think that that really hurts the type of style they play because if you have a, a good defense it makes it easier because your offense doesn't have to be all time like they're they're a boom or bust team and ultimately if you change up that type of style i don't think that's going to be conducive to them actually winning with this current roster that, that, that they have yeah, I would definitely agree with that estimate. And, you know, just going back to my previous question, whether or not they should be in panic mode, I think absolutely. You know, given the fact that, you know, like I mentioned earlier, marginal success come postseason. We understand that, you know, this is a team that lost in the bubble in the first round, although it was a very hard fought series, and they ultimately lost to a team that appeared in the Western Conference Finals. You know, it still kind of says a little bit about this group. And I think the biggest issue as well that, you know, a lot of people might need not even uh, put too much into is the fact that, you know, the age of this starting lineup, you know, Mike Conley's up there in age, Bogdanovich. It seems like all these guys have reached their peak. Rudy Gobert, although he's great defensively, there's not much upside from him from an offensive perspective. He's not much of a decorated offensive player. We understand that, you know, he can, you know, score and drop offs in situations that 
similar to that, but essentially this isn't a guy that's gonna give you too much from that aspect offensively. You know, I think he's averaging what, 15 and 15 on the year, all-star caliber numbers, but is he the difference maker in, you know, this entire tandem going to the NBA Finals, making it to the Western Conference Finals and things of that nature? And I think those are some reasons as to why he could, uh, Donovan Mitchell could potentially end up leaving in the long haul. But essentially, outside of that, what are some other reasons that we might not be hinting on as of right now that could potentially lead to a departure for Donovan Mitchell? Yeah, uh, I would say for Donovan Mitchell, his biggest reasons for leaving outside of winning would be the market that he's in. I think Donovan Mitchell is a guy that is is very popular. He's likable, but I think that he he believes that he should be on a bigger stage. I do think that plays a role in it. Um, I think a team like New York possibly would be a place for him to like really make his stamp and like through all of the endorsements and things that come with that. I think he would be eyeing a situation like that, but. The other thing would be his relationship with Gobert. I think that's really the key of it. Um, they used to be tight, but because of like the COVID stuff that went down in the NBA, that relationship, I think, kind of soured where they are now. And ultimately losing in the NBA matters. If you're losing a whole lot of games, tension builds very, very quickly. So even if like he doesn't hate Gobert, like seeing their team go through the turbulence that they are going through makes you bring into question how strong their chemistry really is and really what's the peak of their situation because you're absolutely right the players on their roster you can argue are gonna bottom out and not really get much better hey, to me their baby. best chance was last season and sadly mike Conley sustained a serious injury that kind of kept them out and to me Conley is a key of activating gobert because i think gobert can punish they just don't give him the ball enough in spots to do so but that can again go back to the chemistry issue between Donovan Mitchell and Gobert. So there's a lot going on there, but I think it's going to be a culmination of factors that will make him want to leave Utah. Just to just to pinpoint on some of the things that you also mentioned, um, obviously, I think that obviously winning is the biggest factor. You know, the Utah Jazz, like I mentioned earlier, marginal success in the postseason. And like you mentioned earlier, you know, Rudy Gobert and Donovan Mitchell's relationship probably isn't that great i don't think that it, it's as bad as the media tries to portray it and i don't know if you saw this or not but you know donovan mitchell actually cleared things up about six seven days ago on chris haynes podcast discussing his relationship with rudy gobert he said ultimately they're fine and you know guys have different versions of expressing themselves through hardships and adversity and you know maybe rudy gobert's comments in the past haven't been that great but essentially i do believe that you know that tandem the issues don't really underlie in terms of you know them liking each other i think it more so has to do with you know just the continuity on the basketball court and it seems like i don't i don't know how many you know uh, assists donovan mitchell has uh, accumulated in you know pick and rolls with rudy gobert and things of that nature but i think stuff like that you know just little things like that could be you know a a really big deciding factor in whether or not you know this team ultimately makes it to the western conference finals let alone an nba finals but i think ultimately you know their better opportunity is also another reason that he could definitely leave uh guys like gordon hayward left in free agency in the past i mean hell even darren williams that was a guy that ultimately you know he was traded due to the fact that you know there's a little bit of dysfunction with him and the head coach at the time jerry sloan but Utah is a very small market and the fact that they don't have much upside, the fact that, you know, they possibly have already hit their peak and the fact that, you know, their window, their championship window could potentially close within the next year or two. I think that is all the right reasons in the world for Donovan Mitchell to potentially end up departing from the Utah Jazz. And, you know, with all that being said, outside of New York, do you think there are any other destinations that he could potentially go to? Well, for me, the reason why New York is the first place that comes up is his connection to New York, his ties, but also like the cap space type of situation. Because if you're going to envision a player going somewhere, the cap space of it all matters. And to me, I would pinpoint him leaving after his contract is up. So whatever that free agency class goes to, he would want to go to a place where A, he feels like he can be the piece to complete that team to win a championship but be a bigger market so to me new york will probably be like the best example of that in, in the next three years but if i had to give you another place for him to go i would probably lean to potentially a place like another small market based on winning oh wow. um 
it would not surprise me if donovan mitchell looked at i would say the dallas mavericks in the next two to three years and to me he has a strong relationship with luka Doncic, but also he could be a guy to where you don't have to focus on playmaking as much because you're playing alongside luka you can be the shot creator slash ball handler to take responsibility away from luka and that tandem could work out beautifully they really need another ball handler to take all of the pressure off of luka from a shot making perspective so in the next two to three years i could see that panning out also like i feel like when the mavericks are good they're a bigger market than most people would really think about so i need the mavericks to be my next spot i'd agree with that obviously new york is definitely one of the primary spots like you mentioned he's got ties to new york he's a native there leon rose was his former agent and on top of that you know johnny bryant a guy who was a member of the utah jazz helped with his development into becoming a star so maybe that could also be you know an, another indication as to why donovan mitchell could potentially depart to new york but that excludes you know this entire episode gifted thank you so much for coming on the ball fake podcast we really appreciate you and your knowledge on the game um if you guys are new to our youtube channel or you're listening on apple Podcasts or spotify make sure to give us a five star rating like comment and subscribe a nice little review and turn on post notification but thank you guys so much for tuning into another episode with me on the ball fake podcast thank you gifted x blades as well for showing up on the show and we out peace